on certain points, even if we felt that really believing the fiction were what was it was advantageous to people, depending on which fiction you're talking about, there's simply just there's too much evidence against it. You can't you can't decide to believe something for which you have no evidence simply because of the good effects, it, the, the, the good experience it will give you or you imagine it will give you. I mean, that's, that's why Pascal's wager never made any sense. I mean, you can't say, I mean, the only way you can believe something to be true, really true, not just metaphorically true, is to believe that if it weren't true, you wouldn't believe it. That you, you stand in some relationship to its truth such that that is the reason why you believe it. Now, you can't say, you can't be telling yourself, you know, I have no evidence for this thing, but I know life would be better if I believed it to be true, and so therefore I really believe it's true. You don't you think pe people do that all the time? I don't think they do. I think they do things much more like we're talking, the metaphorical truth we're talking about. We act as if things are true without forming any strong propositional claim, and that's fine. That's fine. That, that has its own utility. I mean, you, don't, you don't think this is basically, I mean, we all suspend disbelief when we go and watch a movie and we sort of entitle the movie maker to, um, to set the ground rules of the space and if it's Harry Potter then there are magic, magical right. things that can happen and if it's some other story maybe there aren't. So we all have a mechanism whereby we know we can suspend disbelief and it's interesting to me that you seem not to imagine that people are doing that with respect to metaphysical beliefs that have implications for what the right actions that they should take are. Why, why wouldn't it be the case that that same sort of mechanism would apply? Well, it, it does apply, but there are people who are clearly doing much more than that. I mean, the, the, so I'm not, if, if that's all people were doing under the aegis of religion, I wouldn't spend much time worrying about religion. I mean, that, to some degree, that's what people do, you know, as you say, going into caring about things that at bottom we really shouldn't care about. So the World Cup is on right now, and we, we you know, Literally, billions of people care, care down to their toes what happens to this little ball as it traverses a, a lawn, right? And if it goes into the net, it really matters. And if it fails to, it really matters. And it always matters if we hit the target, Sam. But this is, this is something we have manufactured to care about, right? It's no, a it's something that speaks it, to us it's, unbelievably. It's quite deep. literally a game. This is a game that people are playing, but some people take it in taking it further than, you, you, than, than seems truly rational is part of the fun. That's, but, but, the, but the people who can't turn that off... It's a metaphor. The, Soccer's a metaphor. Yeah, but there, but there are people who... There, you know, there are people, you know, the, the fullback who kicks an own goal and then goes back to his you know, South American village and gets murdered, right? He's surrounded by people who are taking the game too seriously. Yeah, right? okay, and, I, I agree. Yeah, and so... My problem with religion is that so much of the time we're meeting those people and we're, and, we're, yes. and we're not criticizing those people. We have no place to stand to criticize those people because we're so attached to the game. Fair enough. 